Everyone experiences disappointment, dreams delayed, regrets, mistakes, accidents, love lost. And for today's guest, her story is no different. She is a woman gifted with many talents, including authoring over 30 books, speaking and singing, and coaching to serve and bring glory to God. Stay tuned to hear our guest share how she has found the hope and blessings God offers during and after troubling times. I'm Barbara Carpuzian, and you're watching Everlasting Love. God loves you so much. I want to share with you a passage of scripture from Psalm 56, 8, and it reads like this. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. And that's how much God loves you. He loves you so much. You're so precious to him. And all you have to do is call on him. He says, if you call on me, I'll answer you. And so today, take the time out just to come to him in a very simple, childlike way and ask him to come into your life, to touch your life, to fill those empty places. And believe me, he will answer. And during the course of the program, you're going to see our website and phone number up on the screen, 773-286-2172. And our website is www.everlastinglovetv.com. If there's anything on the program that interests you, if you're looking for a good church or a Bible study, if you simply want prayer, please feel free to give us a call, drop us a line, and we will do our best to get back with you. I'm really excited to do today's program. Uh, I, I've just been introduced to um, this, this wonderful woman who's had this great impact on our culture. And I don't know where I was, but I'm getting an opportunity <laughs> to receive some of that. And we're, gonna, we're going to be focusing on her book, How to Get Past Disappointment, Finding Hope. And the author of this book is Michelle McKinney Hammond. And I'd like to welcome Michelle to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. for being here, Michelle. So just like I said, I want I've read a little bit about your mm -hmm. story and you've authored over thirty books and you've had an impact on so many women's lives. Um, and now I'm getting a little taste of this um, firsthand. I get a one on one with you. I'm so <laughs> excited that I really want to hear your story. Uh, very personally today. So tell us who what Michelle part? is. Oh, you know what? Every part. Oh my goodness, that would take way too long. Start we'd, from the beginning. Oh no, that was, <laughs> we'd be here for like 10 shows at least. But um, basically I've, I've uh, been around the world and back and uh, started off with a career in advertising actually. I was a writer and an art director and producer and worked on many blue chip accounts for Ford and uh, Coca-Cola and McDonald's mm -hmm. and a bunch of other uh, blue chip accounts and just felt God tugging at my heart and I just kept feeling although I was living in a very exciting life meeting lots of celebrities and flying all over the country and um, you know just enjoying life and production the world of production um, just kept feeling like there was just something more mm -hmm. and there was and uh, so I left the world of advertising behind and entered into ministry. Hmm. So um, I wrote a book. I got hit by a car um, as I was working freelance and uh, ended up in bed for a year and a half. Wow. Uh, uh, surgeries, three surgeries. Yeah, lots of therapy. Um, but while I was in bed, I wrote my first book, which took off and sold out of its first printing in three weeks and, and the name of that book is what to do until love finds you I was really struggling okay. with uh, okay. the single life at that point in time and all my friends were single so I started mulling on the aspects of what we were struggling with and sought God and he gave me a book that is still a bestseller today actually mm -hmm. and uh, so after that book took off then you know all the publishers started calling and so 37 books later here I am and I've kind of branched out from singles 
to I've done a lot of books for singles, but I've also done a lot of books for women, a couple of books for men mm -hmm. um, that range on every topic from temptation mm -hmm. to womanhood mm -hmm. to manhood and God. Um, Devonomics. Like. Devonomics. <laughs> I even have a, a diet book, The Real Skinny on Losing It. You know, so uh, there's a lot going on in life, and, and I, I love breaking down the Word of God into practical principles mm -hmm. that people can follow and apply to their lives so that they can experience the victory that God wants us mm -hmm. to have. So how did you come to know Christ? Well, um, I endured the death of a boyfriend. Um, we were living together at the time and he, we had had an argument and he went off to Los Angeles to kind of diffuse and while he was there um, he got caught in the crossfire of an argument between two other people and was uh, shot and killed oh my. so I was very devastated I was only 21 mm -hmm. and uh, was freelancing trying to get this job that I had gotten that I got the same day that he died I was hired Wow! and I was out um, celebrating and got the news when I got home that he had passed away and uh, I was just suicidal. I was devastated. And it really made me stop and examine uh, what happens after you die. You know, mm. where do you go? Am I going to see this person again? I was raised Episcopalian, um, attended Catholic school, and just really had uh, no idea about eternity or having a relationship with God. It was more of a habit, something mm -hmm. I did on Sundays mm -hmm. and enjoyed socially, sure. but uh, had never really... Um, gotten any depth spiritually mm -hmm. so um, as time went on and I was doing my research um, I came across a book by Hal Lindsey the late great planet Earth oh yes mm -hmm. and he explained mm -hmm. end times and uh, so one night in the middle of the night I just put down my Bible and and I mean that book and, and accepted Christ into my life and the rest is history Wow so you just mm -hmm. kind of did it on your own and yeah yeah kind of a moment of self-reflection and mm -hmm thinking about death and I think a lot of people think about what's going to happen when I'm not here anymore and I know that I thought about that in my own life is what I remember walking to my locker in high school and kind of asking the question like what yeah. happens when we die and mm -hmm. so okay so you accepted the Lord mm -hmm. and you you leave this corporate America well not right will? away not okay. right away this was at the beginning and um so I, I accepted the Lord, but I really didn't know what happened after that. You know, I mean, what do you do? I didn't know anybody that was saved. I didn't have anyone to mentor, or discipline, you know, to disciple me or any of that. So I kind of went back to my way of life and just, but I had a great sense of peace that I had made this connection with God and that everything was going to work out some kind of way. What, what prompted that? I, it was just the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I suppose. But um, one day I got on the bus and there, there was this woman on the bus. She had this huge Bible on her lap. So I said, well, if she's carrying a Bible that big, she must know something about what's in <laughs> So I just plopped myself right down next to her and just got in this whole conversation, which is something I did not do on the bus. I was very much a self-contained person. But I was just so curious because she had, well, you know, those big Woolworth mm. Bibles, you know. It was usually for nineteen ninety nine. Oh, I'm really dating myself now, right? But she had those big tabletops. So I sat down and started asking her what she knew about end times because I was so fascinated with what mm -hmm. Hal Lindsey had to say. Well, we got into a whole discussion. Somehow or other, she managed to wrangle my telephone number from me. And uh, she kept calling me and inviting me to go to church. Well, after the death of my boyfriend, I had gone back to church, but had a very bad experience there. So I decided I wasn't going back. Mm -hmm. And she would call and invite me to church. And so I would always have an excuse for why I wasn't going. And then one day she called and tricked me into coming by asking me, what was I doing at three o'clock? And I figured, well, church must be over. <laughs> so nothing. She says, good. I'll be there to pick you up at church. <laughs> you know, how am I going to get out of this now? So I went ahead and I humored her and I went. And it was very different. It was a little Assembly of God church that was just starting off. Very intimate, close-knit group of people. Quite different from what I was used to. And I found it very interesting and a bit comforting. Mm -hmm. So I got in the car afterwards and lit up my cigarette and said, you know, that was really nice. <laughs> so I think I'd like to come back again next week. <laughs> Is there a smoking room? <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
So I, I went back and uh, the week that I had gone, there was a visiting pastor. So this week when I went back, it was the pastor who promptly announced at the end of service that he was going to pray for everyone and lay hands on them and anoint them with oil. And I was like, mm, that's a little bit much for me. You know, I'm Episcopalian, that touchy feely stuff, you know. But I found that I felt very awkward sitting there because I was the only person who didn't think this was a wonderful thing to do and jumped up and ran up to the front. So I was sitting there and after a while I was like, you need to get up and go, you know, whether you understand what's going on or not, just in, when mm. in Rome do as the Romans do. Mm -hmm. So I got up and I just had the most unusual feeling as I walked towards the altar that I just wanted to just weep, like from the tips of my mm, toes, I mm -hmm. just wanted to weep. Yes, and, yes. Um, I just was not going to do that because I wasn't used to public displays in church, mm -hmm. and so I was fighting and fighting to contain myself. But when I got to the front, the pastor laid hands on me and said, oh, God loves you so much. He loves you so much. And he's called you. He has something for you to do, but he loves you. And when he said that, I just broke. Mm -hmm. I mean, the floodgates opened and mm -hmm. I was sobbing so loud. I was just embarrassing myself. Mm -hmm. But after that, I was never the same. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was on a, a roll for Christ. I was on fire. I was witnessing to everyone, dragged tons of people to church, you know. And um, just was tricking them at three o'clock. <laughs> you know, I didn't trick them. I just told them they were going to hell and they needed to get saved. I was there very bold. Go. I was John. I voice in the wilderness there you go. crying out. There you go. And so, you know, I mean, here I am in the world of advertising where it's about partying and lunches and, you know, really networking to mm -hmm. the wazoo. Right, right. And all of a sudden I don't do that anymore. I don't go anywhere. I don't do this. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do anything. And, you know, I had a boyfriend at the time. I was like, I can't sleep with you anymore. You're going to hell you're going to hell, you know. <laughs> and everybody was like, what is wrong with this girl? My mother thought I had joined a cult, so she started sure. investigating, you know, what is wrong with what her, you, drink, you, know, you know, who know, brainwashed what? her, and she got saved herself in the middle of it all. Um, and But it was just an amazing time, and it was a very effective time. Of course, it couldn't go on that way for forever. Someone was going to punch me in a minute, but um, my life has never been the same since then. And of course, as I grew and matured in Christ, I got some sense about <laughs> How to, but you know, the crazy people work for a while, That's but right. only for a while, That's right. you know. <laughs> um, so <laughs> eventually I had to get some wisdom, you know. I, I remember going home for uh, Thanksgiving that year and, and the Lord spoke to me and said, Michelle. And I said, yes, Lord, you know, I, I heard him very clearly. You know, <laughs> He said, I want you to do something for me when you go home. Do me a favor. I said, oh, yes, Lord, anything you say. He said, please don't talk about me. <laughs> You're messing up my work. I was like, oh, my gosh. Really, Lord? What a yes, request. You know, yes, yes. Just live. Just be in me. That's I said, right. okay. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I didn't say anything because I actually had gotten to the point where I was turning people off, you yeah. know. I did that. I, I, I Yeah, I think we all have that little phase, you know. A crazy moment, Repent, right? Repent, you know. It just doesn't yeah. work. In. So, um, you know, I... But it worked until it was while it was supposed to work. You know, some key people got saved during that time. A Bible class was started at, at, at uh, Burrell where I worked. And, um, you know, and people knew after a while that I was serious mm -hmm. and that I, I hadn't flipped out. Mm -hmm. And um, I continued working. But then I began to uh, take advantage of, of my status um, to be able to reach out to people that wouldn't be reached mm -hmm. any other time, mm -hmm. models and actors and sure. musicians. And sure. So it was exciting to meet um, people who weren't going to church, the unchurched, and, mm -hmm. and just really Planet share with and them and see many of them come to Christ mm -hmm. who are still in Christ. And um, it was an exciting time. So what was the shift like? How How difficult was it to leave that and to transition into ministry and 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 how how did you get the call well i you know it wasn't difficult because i had had enough after a while i mean i was i was in the business for about 12 years and then i freelanced for several years mm -hmm. after that and i just did a job again can you believe it okay okay uh, but um it, you know, I just had a sense that there was something more. There was something more that I needed to be doing. Okay. And even though I was doing the Bible class at, at work once a week and teaching Sunday school and leading worship mm -hmm. at my church, mm -hmm. something was missing. I just felt like something else was supposed to be going on. And my mentor had um, encouraged me to write a book about singles. 
And I'd kind of started it and put it off. And um, I got let go from my job because they were doing cutbacks. And, and literally my boss said, I'm going to let you go because I think you're the one that's most likely to succeed if you are not huh. here. Huh. You know, so um, I went on to. Okay. Was that tough to hear, or? No, it wasn't, because I was ready. God had prepared me, told okay. me I was gonna um, okay. uh, be leaving. Had actually told me to pack up my things the week before. Okay, okay. Um, and that was the exciting part of life for me that I heard him so clearly. Yes. You know. Yes. Um, so it wasn't a shock to me. Mm -hmm. um, I continued to work freelance for them several years mm -hmm. after I left. Sure. So. It wasn't bad, and, and uh, so then I got hit by a car. <laughs> I and, love uh, that transition yeah. there. And, uh, it's like one door closes and then... Yeah, so I was freelancing, mm -hmm. uh, running around the world doing a, an infomercial for McDonald's that took a year to produce, won a Philo Award, did something else for Spelman College. So still having fun, and then one day I'm walking across the street getting ready to go to a voiceover audition, because I also did voiceovers, okay. um, and got hit by a car and uh, ruptured my patella tendon on my leg oh, and my. didn't wasn't really aware of it until about two weeks later when the damage was then even further uh, exacerbated because of the lack of attention to okay. it. So. Uh, three operations, uh, tons of therapy. A year and a half later, uh, I wrote my first book. My mentor had been trying to get me to write that book, and I just was a happy sanguine mm -hmm. and couldn't focus past that first chapter. But lying in bed, I had a lot of time to focus. Mm -hmm. And my friends, who were great and just wonderful people in the Lord, just gathered around my bed and said, what do you think God's saying to you? And I was like, I don't know. Leave me alone. I'm taking a Valium, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but that was a but, tough situation. Yeah, 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 it was. But eventually I did get that. You know, it was, it was time to complete that book. And um, when I did, Harvest House Publishers uh, took the book. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had a wonderful relationship for many, many years mm -hmm. now. And um, that was the first of, of many books. And yeah. so, of course, once that book came out, people actually thought I knew what I was talking about and started <laughs> inviting me to uh, speak at conferences. Mm -hmm. And so after a while... I actually didn't have time to do my advertising work anymore because God ministry overtook my life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I need to take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so a year and a half of therapy and mm -hmm. surgeries. I mean, what was the what was the verdict after you had gotten hit and I had ruptured my patella tendon, completely yeah. severed it, and there were just complications because it hadn't been taken care of earlier. Um, so it resulted in me having to do surgeries three times okay. to get the get it right. And that year and a half wrote the book, mm -hmm. but it it's amazing how God did something so amazing out of a out of a difficult situation. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So was that like is that was that a disappointment? It was, was a disappointment. It was a mm -hmm. disappointment that I didn't recover as quickly as I'd like and get on with my life the way I was used to living mm -hmm. it. Um, and so it, it also presented financial problems because I had difficulty working. Okay. So um, I had lots of questions for God, but um, um, as life went on and things began to unfold, and I had that aha moment that, oh, God used all of this. Not that he made it happen, but That's he right. used it yes. mm -hmm. to get me to the next place. Mm -hmm. And I guess that that... I. That's the recurring theme of my life, and the greatest lesson I've learned is that God is able to um, take everything that we go through, every setback, mm -hmm. and, and make it a step to mm -hmm. get to a greater place. Yes. So we're actually uh, we're going to segue into into your book, and we're talking about uh, Michelle McKinney's. Uh, uh, Hammond's book, How to Get Past Disappointment, Finding Hope, and. Um, I, I enjoyed uh, some of what I read in here, and I really think that this could be a Bible study. I think it it's is, set it up is, for yeah. a Bible study with some great um, reflective questions at, at the end of, of each of the chapters. Mm -hmm. And then I love the cool water section that's in the yeah. back, which is kind of a devotional. Um, there's a scripture passage for, for every day, and then a little bit of a... you know, kind of a follow-up piece to that, um, to that uh, scripture. So. Uh, and in some cases, there are multiple scriptures mm -hmm. for a day. So what? So what was the impetus for this book then? And then, and then, and then, I'd like to kind of get into y you. You talk about the woman. The woman mm -hmm. of the well is referenced in this mm -hmm. book quite, quite yes. frequently. And so, let's talk about that. Mm 
Well, you know, in my travels, um, speaking at various women's conferences, the repeated question is always beyond the relational stuff that people usually ask me about, because that's my specific area, so to speak, um, is how do I get past this disappointment, this this betrayal, this mm -hmm. this upheaval, this this thing that has happened in my life or keeps happening in my mm -hmm. life? How do I break the pattern? How do I get past it? And I kept hearing that over and over and over again. And um, I was speaking at an e-women event, um, which is um, sponsored by the American Association of Christian Counselors. Um, and uh, it was their year for dealing with this particular topic. And I chose the woman at the well. And the more I spoke, it just so resonated with the women um, that I, my publisher came to one of the events and said, you've got to write a book about this. This mm -hmm. is such a, you know, this is serious. So. Um, we ended up doing the book along with a, a six DVD teaching mm -hmm. series that can also be purchased to use in conjunction with the book. Mm -hmm. But the woman at the well, I, I focused on her when it came to finding hope and getting past disappointment because I felt she was someone that a lot of women could relate to. I find that uh, when we deal with an area like disappointment, that it's not a one time occurrence usually, mm -hmm. that there is a cycle, that uh, uh, it seems to be. Um, a repeated experience in a specific area in most of our lives. Um, and so I thought that women would relate to her, that uh, she was disappointed and she was so disappointed that it was hard for her to recognize the blessing when it presented itself. Mm -hmm. um, she had a little edge to her. She was, you know, a little sarcastic. And mm -hmm. I think in her mind when Jesus, you know, approached her, uh, that she thought she was being approached for another reason. You know, mm -hmm. that was what she was used to. Um, and uh, she wasn't buying into it. Mm -hmm. And But he persisted. He was determined mm -hmm. to make that connection with her yes. and to have her engage. And um, so he he pursued her in, in the conversation mm -hmm. and didn't allow her to, to get away. Yes. What would you say in, in your dealings with women mm -hmm. are some of those common disappointment themes? Like I know you kind mm -hmm. you alluded to them sort of generally, but what would you say are some specific ones? Well, I would say that uh, delayed dreams is, is a big area. Um, certainly relationships. I mean, that's the number one, you know. Um, I get a lot of my husband left me or mm -hmm. this person broke my heart or where is he? You know, um, there's always a relational disappointment. Um, of course, there are some people who are disappointed that their dreams haven't come true yet or mm -hmm. disappointed in uh, what's going on with their children or um, disappointed in themselves uh, in an area where they feel they failed. Um, so the list goes on, but those are the prevalent ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so would you say that with these disappointments that there are more that are self-inflicted, um, where folks are causing these kinds of things? Or well, you know, I think that there are both. I think that there are categories for both. You know, they all, there's a saying that, you know, first time shame on them, second time shame on you. Mm -hmm. uh, so if when it becomes a repeated cycle, then we have to deal with the aspect that who is the common denominator in the repeat cycle? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. if, if it's me, then mm -hmm. uh, I've got to deal with the root of it with myself before um, I start blaming other people because it begins and ends with me and I have the power in most circumstances to create a different ending for mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. but that demands then that I be honest about what's going on in my life and, and be honest about my part in it whether that mm -hmm. means um, that I did something or I didn't do something mm -hmm. because we've got commission and omission. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes uh, not saying anything can be just as bad as saying yes. the wrong thing. Yes. So um, owning my part mm -hmm. in the drama, right. owning my part in the disappointment, right. um, acknowledging it, and, and really taking a good hard look at what I keep doing repeatedly and admitting when it's no longer working. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and Jesus does that very well, very subtly and gently without the judgmental uh, edge to it, mm -hmm. but just really bringing you to the place where you've got to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. um, the truth is what sets us free. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, I always say denial is not just a river in Egypt, it's where most of us live. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, uh, I like that. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's really um, important for us to get past that mm -hmm. and not keep blaming other people or ignoring what's mm -hmm. going on. You've got to be able to say, this is what's going on. This hurts. I'm even a little upset with God about it because I don't know why he allowed it to mm -hmm. happen. I mean, just do the dump, do the emotional dump, mm -hmm. put it all on the table and then say, mm -hmm. okay, God, sift through this and show me which parts are mine to own. Yes, because I was going to ask you too, do you think that, um, and, and, I, and, and we're not playing the blame game here, you're right, right. we need to own what is ours, mm -hmm. but just wondering too if, if society, this sort of day and age that we live in, mm -hmm. contributes to disappointment. Well, I think that it contributes in the sense that it sets us up for really bad expectations that are just yes. unrealistic. Yes. You yes. know, because disappointments, a friend of mine always used to laugh about this and say a disappointment is really a disappointment. It's an appointment you made with somebody, mm -hmm. whether it's a person or God, and they didn't cooperate and show up. So you feel dissed yeah. in the mix of what happened. So it's a disappointment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that expectations do play a lot into that. Um, you know, that this person should call me 10 times a day. Well, that's not realistic. Mm -hmm. So now you're disappointed that they don't. Mm -hmm. um, how about choosing a more realistic goal of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we get to the place in our relationship where those phone calls are not necessary. And we know that when we don't get that call, that something's going on. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a place of, of, you know, all things in measure, you know, mm -hmm. it says that, um, uh, it's not so much that it's a sin, but it's how much are you doing it? How mm -hmm. much are you um, uh, connected to that thing or invested in right. that thing or right. obsessed with it? Right, right. So do, do you think that there are some uh, folks, and I mean, we were kind of getting maybe real analytical here, but uh -huh. <laughs> that suffer from disappointment. And by the way, I just wanted to... Um, reference uh, Michelle McKinney Hammond's book how to get past disappointment finding hope and that's really what we're talking about and I, I know we want to get into um, a little bit more of, of of the pearls that that are in here mm -hmm. do you do you feel that or do you see that there are some folks who are more susceptible or more easily disappointed mm -hmm. in life than mm -hmm. others oh yeah and yeah. why well, I think that it's our, our temperament, our makeup, um, what we've been groomed to expect. Um, you know, some people are just disappointed in themselves because mm. people have, have such high expectations of them and they just aren't wired for half of the things that those people expect of mm -hmm. them. And, and they take it they they take it very personally. And um, and so they can get bogged down in really being disappointed in themselves. And, and you know, it's not a good place to be. But again, most disappointments are based on some sort of expectation. Mm -hmm. And so we really have to give our expectations back to God. He understands. He says, hope deferred makes the heart yes. grow sick. Yes. But uh, a hope fulfilled is a tree of life. Yes. So when we talk about disappointments, we have to really examine our expectations. What did we expect from God? What do we expect from others? And what do we expect from ourselves? Mm -hmm. So so talk a little bit, and I'm thinking about the woman at the well, too, and, mm -hmm. and trying and, and maybe sort of tying this in there. But talk about this. You talk about self-perception. You talk about identity. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in our culture, we hear, we hear the phrase, you know, I'm trying to find myself. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out who I am. And... Um, and I feel like that's almost like a cyclical journey. Sure. It's not, well, it's a never-ending journey. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, in Ephesians it says it's only in Christ that we discover who we are and why we are here. So um, without his assistance, um, we will be in search of ourselves forever because we haven't connected to the one who, who made us. And, and, and knows why we were made, who, who gave us our purpose and who, who has constructed our destiny in such a way that we need to plug into him to reach the end of it. So um, it's really, really important for us to not create our identity, but to ask God to clarify our identity. Mm -hmm. So somebody who's not a believer, obviously, mm -hmm doesn't make a connection to that right, at all. Right. And so that's really for somebody that recognizes that they're made in the image and mm -hmm. likeness uh, um, of God. Mm -hmm. And so so how do how do we do that? I mean I and I guess, you know, I'm thinking about the woman at the well mm -hmm. and 
and and you know she was in a pretty tough place and there might be folks that are watching that don't even know much about her mm -hmm. you might want to tell them a little bit about her mm -hmm. and and you know how how do we do this so we said so we ask God but like you know how do we how do we in our own lives mm -hmm. um, develop a, a healthier self-perception mm -hmm. um, and and where does the negative self-perception come from well it, can, it comes from parents it comes from peers it comes from comparing ourselves to what we see on television oh I'm supposed to be a size zero well guess what you're not <laughs> you know and that person's not is, is like killing themselves to stay size right. zero you know right. um, so I think that there are a lot of external pressures that overtake the internal uh, desire. Because I think most of us are pretty okay until other people start telling us we're not, you know. And, and then, oh, and then we start comparing ourselves, and that is a never-ending thing. Because at the end of the day, there's always going to be somebody richer than you, cuter than you, smarter than you. There's always going to be somebody more er than you. Yeah. So uh, once we understand that, we can stop the comparison game and get back to, okay, God, here I am. You said I was fearfully and wonderfully made. What was I made for? Mm. Because really that whole search for um, self-esteem, and, um, and all of that lies in our purpose and us fulfilling the reason we were yes. created. Uh, there's something about when you get up in the morning and you're doing what you were created to do that you don't have these self-esteem issues because there's a self of, an, of awareness um, that I am doing what I was created to do. Yeah. Um, and that's in every walk of life. It's, it's who I'm touching. It's how I'm affecting even someone that I smile at on the street. Mm. Um, that might have saved their life. Some, they might have been on their way to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. And your one smile said, gave them the hope that they needed to say, I can hang mm -hmm. on another day. We don't know. I, you know, I think that we get so bogged down in what we're supposed to be doing. And yet God doesn't tell us to do anything. He says, be. Be in me. Be ye holy. I mean, his list of, of doing is real short. And the list of being is a much more concise list and very clear when it comes from his word. Mm -hmm. So it's very important um, for us to not get our priorities askew and for us to um, line up with his plan, which is not to um, fill yourself with pride about who you are, but to understand who he created you to be mm -hmm. and understand that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was listening earlier, actually, I think it was today, there was, uh, there was a, a talk show, it was kind of like a news talk show, mm -hmm. and um, they were, and it was about weight, mm -hmm. and they said that they were interviewing these young girls, I mean, these girls were like five and six mm -hmm. years old, mm -hmm. and they were already, one of the girls was already talking about that she was fat, mm -hmm. and part of that was 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 spoken into sure. her with by some of her peers mm -hmm. um and and she's talking about this right and then they brought in a group of of these young girls i mean seriously they yeah. were like five years old six years old and they were already talking about physical beauty sure and i'm thinking to myself where is that coming from it's coming from the media it's coming and it's coming even from parents i mean I think that parents are influenced and they start saying, Susie, don't eat that. You're getting fat. Well, that, you know, children really internalize what parents yes, say yes. Um, and take it to heart. And uh, just one sentence can like set somebody off for the rest of their lives. Yes. And so parents have to be very careful and understand that their mouths have great creative power. Uh, with their children and that what they say is what they get out of their children. So uh, it really is is good to ex encourage them and exhort them and mm -hmm. give them a sense that they can do anything and that they're great. Yes. They're wonderful. And you know, when, when, when you feel good about yourself, your body lines up with yeah. that. Yeah. Well, and I think you can do things that are healthy at sure. home, and but you have to be careful how you verbalize things. Right. You know, I have two daughters that mm -hmm. are grown, and and I, th you know, and I think, and I thought about that a lot mm -hmm. because when I when I was a kid, I come from a Middle Eastern background, mm -hmm. and so I was in an environment where I was kind of like. Um, you know, I was different mm -hmm. than than the other kids, sure. and I was made fun of. My yeah. features were made fun of, and you know, just and just sort of 
of the way that I was raised at home because mm -hmm. my, 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 I was a first generation kid. Sure. So I was raised a little bit differently. And, mm -hmm. you know, when other girls were shaving their legs, uh, mine were still <laughs> not shaved. My uh -huh. uniform was longer uh -huh. than the rest of theirs. And, and I and I and I remembered being impacted mm -hmm. by some of the things that were, were said, said to yeah. me as a kid. Although when I go back to my reunions, I'm like, hey, you yeah, know? you look great. And they all look <laughs> yeah. horrible. Okay? They live way well, too I fast. I wasn't going to say that. Yeah. But, you know, well, I, mean, I hear you though. You know, you know, the Bible says that He renews our youth yes, like the he eagles. Does. You know, yes, and, he and, does. and and it's, you know, I went to my class reunion. They were like, oh my goodness, you look great. And I said, yeah, a sinless life will That's keep you. Right. That's right. It's the best beauty secret on the yes. planet. Well, and I always, I always uh, share Psalm 16 with folks where David said, Preserve me, O God, mm -hmm. for in thee do I put my trust, mm -hmm. and surround me with the godly men and women of the land. And, mm -hmm. and I believe that, because that, I heard that it's only one quarter genetics, mm -hmm. and it's three quarters everything Yeah, else. all the choices that we make, <laughs> our right. food, what we do with ourselves, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I always say God saved me from myself because I was yes. full of, of bad habits before he got to me. Mm. You know, and he miraculously delivered me from all of those and, and preserved my youth. I told him that was our deal. I would stay long. I would stay single as long as he wanted me to, as long as he kept me cute, because I didn't <laughs> want to have to tell my husband I used to be cute. <laughs> I think you're really cute. Oh, Michelle. thank you. Thank you. So, thank okay, you. so now that we passed that, right? <laughs> Well, and so self-confidence yeah. is the other piece, right? Yes, yes. And you, you've started talking about some practical things. Mm -hmm. So there's this conversation with God. Yes. And then there's this application of his truth in mm -hmm. our lives. Yes. And you talked about doing his will. Yes. Figuring out what is what is it that I'm here mm -hmm. for. And when you are fulfilling that, mm -hmm. there's a joy and a happiness. Yes. In, in, in our lives, right? Yes, this, there this, is. This sense of accomplishment. Yes, there's the, the purpose. Well, we've all heard about the purpose-driven life, but um, I think that it was so popular because it is the core of our existence. Um, and everyone, whether they're saved or not, wants to know what their purpose is. And, and everyone longs to be significant. Um, and I think that, that if anything affects our self-esteem, it, uh, it is the feeling that we haven't contributed something to the world. Mm. So it's very important for us to get in purpose and realize that some purposes are uh, much more subtle Mm -hmm. And as they say in theater, there are no small uh, roles, there are only small actors. Mm. The same thing can be said for life, that um, there's no insignificant role. Um, every role plays into something that creates the big picture. Yes. It is a tapestry. Yes. Um, it is. Some people are the gold thread. Some people are the bold uh, black outlines. Mm. And some people are all the colors in between. Mm -hmm. But without all of those threads, yes. there would be no dimension in that piece of art that makes it something that people want and pay a lot of money yes. for. So it's very, very important to say, I'm a fine thread in the scheme That's of life. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. To write that one down. Yes. Um, well, I, I want to talk about uh, something else that you um, that you uh, talk about in your book, and we're we're talking about Michelle McKinney Hammond's book, How to Get Past Disappointment, Finding mm -hmm. Hope. This is one of over thirty books that she has written, um, and really ministers. It, I think it can minister to both men and women, uh, but it certainly ministers to women in some of the different seasons of life, different experiences in life that they have, and it's it's written in a in a in a format that it could be used in a Bible study with great reflective questions at the end of it and also uh, at, at the end of each chapter. And also, I love the cool water section, which is like a, it's it's kind of a devotional. Uh, it is a devotional and and, <laughs> and it, it, it's scripture that's, that's written out for you for 30, I think it's 31 days. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then under each of the scriptures is a, is, is, is a little bit of a, of a summary and, and just kind of a, um, some some spiritual support to that scripture. So, um, just it, I'm just glad that we have a chance to to share some of the nuggets um, on our program. And, and I was thinking about when you were talking about being. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people would ask me, you know, how do I know 
that I'm in his perfect will or how do I know what his will is? Mm -hmm. You know, and I would say to people, you know, stop seeking the will and seek him mm -hmm. and then you'll find yourself mm -hmm. in the middle of his will. That's right. Because it's it's in the relationship that things happen yeah. and you're like, yeah. wow. Yeah. You know, the store just opened, or a networking mm -hmm. opportunity, mm -hmm. or something. To, here, you know, would, Michelle, could you write this book? And, right. You know, who would have thought? Here you are laying in a hospital bed, which was a disappointment. Sure. But then God used you to write a bestseller, and sure. it's still a bestseller. And, and let me just add this: that you know, all the disappointments that I'd had romantically, I uh, went into that first book too. Mm. You know, um, because maybe someone can't relate to a car accident. But I think that they can relate to a relational disappointment. And I had had a series of them yes. and had given up on relationships and wondered, was true love ever possible? Mm. Um, you know, and then coming to the Lord and trying to live and walk holy, uh, that became a whole other sand yes. trap of, of, of not every guy is going to put up with your holy walk. And mm. so is there any hope um, for me moving forward with Christ as a Christian um, now that I'm a Christian? Um, for, I guess I, I got sucked into that whole myth that a lot of Christians do that now my life is supposed to be perfect because God loves me mm. and he's never going to let anyone hurt me mm. and he's never going to let anything bad happen. You know, <laughs> expectations, yeah, right? you know, yeah. bad and uh, wrong <laughs> expectations because Jesus Christ clearly said uh, in this life, you will have tribulation, yes. but be of good cheer. Yes. for I have overcome the world. Yeah. So, you know, the first couple of things that set you back, you're just rocked by it. Oh, where is God? What did he, what, you know, where did he go? Does he not like me anymore? How did he let this happen? You know, and I think that we all ask these questions yes, yes. until we understand that God is a God of process. And then he says to try of your faith works patience yes, yes. and let patience have its perfect work so you may be perfect and entire lacking nothing and trial tribulations work experience and that experience creates hope in us mm -hmm. that we can never be ashamed of so when we start learning more about him like it says in in peter mm -hmm. walking out our faith and and growing in the knowledge of him a steadfastness comes into our walk in spite of our disappointments yes. because we understand that there's a process involved yes. in god tempering our character to get us to the place where we're walking in the fullness of who mm -hmm. he created us to be we don't personalize the disappointment anymore we stop asking god why yes and we begin to say god what yeah. What do you want to get out of yes, this situation? Yes, that is so true. How are you going to glorify yourself? Yes. What do you want to get out of me? What lesson am I, am I supposed to be learning? And how am I supposed to be yes. reflecting a greater weight of glory for your kingdom and making you look attractive mm -hmm. as I weather this thing and get through it and come out on the other yes. side with a testimony? And I always tell people, the more you moan in your test, the greater your testimony will be. <laughs> I like that. Yes, I haven't yes. heard that yes, one. Yes, yes, yes. I so, need to write that one down. Too. Uh -huh. The greater the test, the more you moan. These the are Michelleisms. The <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, really important to not run from the trials. Realize that pain is a friend. Yeah. You know, pain tells you that something's wrong. And if you never got that signal, you could you could die. Look at people yeah. who don't go to get a mammogram or don't right, discover right. cancer until way too late. And it takes them out of here. Whereas if you detect it early, they always talk about early detection. Yeah. Well, that's what pain does. Pain gives us early detection and saves us from experiencing fruit that comes from the root of something that we're not dealing yeah. with in our lives. Yeah. So um, disappointments uh, redirect our expectations. Mm -hmm. They um are an opportunity for God to reveal himself in a yes. greater way. Yes. And also, um, it's a great exercise for us to become better. Yes, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Love it. Are you getting this? <laughs> I am. Come on, keep it coming. <laughs> it's great. Well, so if we're making God the center, mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about worship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because... That's how we make oh, yeah. him the center, mm -hmm. right? And you, I, I mean, some of the things that I think you talk about in that chapter are pretty deep. And mm -hmm. you touch on um, some principles that I don't think other people talk about. I mean, mm -hmm. even you talk about, you know, sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So talk talk about worship mm -hmm. um, and, and what that should be in a, or what that should mean in a, in, a, in, in a person's life. Well, worship should be the core of your existence. I don't know how you exist without it. And it is critical to our survival because when we stop we are going to worship something 
period. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, worship is not just about lifting our hands and singing a song to God. Worship is literally the day to day living out of the word of God and living out our relationship with him. When Jesus had his conversation with that woman at the well, the whole crux of the entire thing was all about relationship from her relationships gone wrong to getting the right relationship. Mm -hmm. And even she got that at the end when she uh, he pointed out that she'd had six men in her life and she was still there thirsty okay mm -hmm. and uh and so you <laughs> she know was. And, and she goes yeah you're right well, so i think something clicked in her in that moment and she said so how do i get to god because mm -hmm. obviously the men are not working that's right you know that's even right. she got it you yeah. know yeah. Um, and she wasn't deep she was just the average woman right, right. so when we think about this in the context of our own lives uh, all the things that we try to fill our existence with mm -hmm. Uh, for satisfaction um, or to, to gird up our faith even will never, they'll always fall short um, because they're not what, they're not going to fill the hole that God created for himself mm -hmm. in our hearts. Mm -hmm. And what Can I interject something here, mm -hmm. Michelle? Something too that, and I don't know if you alluded to this in the book, but she was willing to tolerate the going out when it was hotter than everyone. Oh, just to avoid. Yeah. yeah. She was willing to tolerate the the discomfort. Yes. Yes. Yeah, she was tolerating discomfort because her life and the choices she had made had um, left her at a place where people didn't think very highly of her. Um, you know, and so she had to avoid. And it's interesting because all she was looking for was relationship. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of her looking for relationship, she ended up more isolated yes. than ever. Yes. Um, you know, so so here we have it that she finally gets to the crux of what's gone wrong and what's really missing in her life and and God's and Jesus says to her you don't know who you worship and that's why you don't know where to go to worship and you don't realize that it's not in a, in a, in a place on the map yes. it's not even about a time of day or a song it's about living this thing out mm -hmm. the knowledge of him and responding to him in relationship mm -hmm. he's looking for people who will walk out relationship yes. with him and um and be authentically who they are the message bible yes, says yes uh, be authentically who you are in him so here it is that she gets the, the light comes on and she realizes her entire existence is created for worship and it's all about being intimately involved and engaged with God. Now, what does that look like? Uh, he gives us a foretaste of that in our in the intimacy that we experience on earth mm -hmm. as as couples in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sex is not just sex. Mm -hmm. It is worship. It is a giving all you are and all you mm -hmm. have to the one you love. Right. Being naked and unashamed, mm -hmm. transparent open and vulnerable yes, yes. to the point of giving everything yes. of yourself. You know, um, I've always said, I've always had that in my mind mm -hmm. and have said and have said it, but I've always been careful around who I say yes, it to yes. because some people might not, mm -hmm. but that's so true the yes. way you expressed it. Well, the Bible says first natural and spiritual. And so yes. when we look at the intimacy thing, yes. we see the height of pleasure happening. Um, and, and that is a foretaste of the pleasure that we will experience when we become one with God throughout mm -hmm. eternity. Mm -hmm. I always tease people and say, that's why we're going to need a glorified body because we couldn't take that much pleasure <laughs> on a nonstop basis. We'd just blow right on up, okay? So <laughs> so God has to give us a new like body that, that contains that much <laughs> pleasure. Right. He says, at his right hand are pleasures evermore. <laughs> Woo! You know, that's an awesome thought. Yeah. But everything is a foretaste right. of what we are experiencing in the spirit with with. Christ mm -hmm. and with Jesus and uh, with God himself. So when we get into to worship, it is the walking it out. And why is it critical to worship? Let me just say it is critical for us to worship because wherever our focus is and wherever we're invested in becomes the thing that's magnified in our lives. Mm -hmm. So if I worship a man who is human, right, and he fails me, Yep. I'm devastated. I'm done. Right. Because I put all my eggs into that one right. basket that was a fragile basket. Yep. You know, if, if you're going to uh, walk with people, you have to allow them their humanity. Yes. And most of us don't. Yes. God is the only perfect lover. He's the only perfect father. He's mm -hmm. the only perfect everything. Mm -hmm. So you can't afford to put all your eggs in his basket, yes. but not in any yes. other aspect of yes. life. Yes. But when we worship God, okay, 
when we worship him, he becomes magnified. Mm -hmm. I love uh, Tammy Faye Baker used to sing on PTL Club, and she would just have the mascara running down her face, and she would just <laughs> sing this song. I'll never forget, she said, my God is bigger than all my problems. Yeah. He's bigger than all my fears. Yeah. He's bigger than any mountain that I can and cannot see. Yes. He's even bigger than my questions. That's huge, because yeah. I got some questions. Yeah. Now. I got some questions <laughs> for God, right? <laughs> yeah. You so, and me both. <laughs> yes, you know, but he's even bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And what happens when I stop, even in the middle of disappointment, of difficulty, mm -hmm. of unending trial, and I say, you know, I am not going to focus on this. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to dwell in this place. I'm not going to allow it to paralyze me. Right. I am going to turn my affection and my uh, uh, attention towards someone who is greater yes. than these issues. Yes. And I begin to worship. And sometimes, you know, God starts off looking real small because my problems look really big. Yeah. But the more I worship yes. and I put myself in remembrance of who he is, mm -hmm. how powerful and awesome he is, yes. he becomes magnified and the trial dwindles and gets back in the right perspective yes. where yes. it belongs. I remember once teaching at a women's retreat and uh, the, the, the person who was leading the group had us all write our, our issues that we were praying about on a piece of paper and insert them into a helium balloon. Mm -hmm. And then we took the balloons and we walked out onto a field mm -hmm. and we were singing songs and worshiping God. And um, she said, okay, now release your problem to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we released our balloons and of course they went up, up, up and we stood watching them and they went higher and higher and higher into the sky until they vanished above the clouds. And I stood there in fascination because the thought that came to me was, wow, the closer they got to God, the smaller they became mm. until they vanished altogether. Wow. My focus Great. was up. My focus was not no longer on holding the yes. problem and looking at it here. Yes. I looked up yes. and it vanished. Yeah. That's awesome. So it's worship literally. Mm -hmm. Uh, gives us a new perspective mm -hmm. on the things that we're going through. Mm -hmm. And worship is not just praise and worship, but mm -hmm. deciding to obey mm -hmm. in spite of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. That is an act of worship. Paul said uh, for us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, yes. which is our reasonable act of worship. Yes. Yeah. And presenting your bodies is not just going to the temple and laying out on a slab. Right. Right. It is literally surrendering everything that you are every day it is it's, worship is as simple sometimes as not cussing out somebody who deserves it they yes. actually deserve it yeah but you temper yourself because you choose to say yes to the spirit yes. and no to your flesh yes. that is an act of worship mm -hmm. uh, every act of obedience is a is a is an act of worship mm -hmm. Wow, I hope that you enjoyed that because I was certainly blessed by it. Uh, and we have been talking from Michelle McKinney Hammond's book, How to Get Past Disappointment, Finding Hope. Make Jesus the center of your life and see what a difference he will make. God bless you.